Chapter 1. Parenting is an awesome occupation. It's amazing how the best things in life often get overlooked. Parenting is one of those things. Bringing children into this world and equipping them for adulthood is no small task, and every parent needs to be heavily rewarded. But parenting is much like teaching. No amount of reward can compensate for the value you're offering, and the impact of your work can only be measured in eternity. Another thing that makes parenting so strange is that there is no school for it, and every parent seems to have their own unique styles for raising kids. No doubt, some of these styles are highly effective, others work just fine, and some others shouldn't even exist. Where do people learn to parent, anyway? For the most part, we learn it from our parents or primary caregivers, and that's an important lesson for all parents. Your children are subconsciously learning from you. They are noting how you react to issues, how you deal with people, and the words you use often. Everything you say and do, including your hidden motives, is all being recorded in your child's subconscious memory. The parenting style you inherited from your parents might be insufficient for the time we live in, so it makes sense to learn better ways to raise your kids. Nearly every parent desires to raise successful children and protect them from the harsh experiences they had themselves. This desire affects all parenting styles, but unfortunately, some methods are too extreme and therefore counterproductive. If you desire to raise successful children, you must use psychological principles guaranteed to turn your children into successful and independent adults. In this summary, you will learn time-tested parenting principles that have worked for centuries. Some parents discovered them by accident or trial and error. Others learned from mentorship, but you're about to get everything all condensed in this summary. Get ready for a dramatic change. Parenting is how culture gets transmitted to the next generation. Esther Wojcicki. Did you know? Most kids with busy parents trust their teachers in school more than their parents. Children don't just trust because they live with you. They're more likely to trust someone they talk to often. Chapter 2. Children are complete human beings. The only difference is their mental faculties are undeveloped. Let that sink deep. Your children are not less human because they are young. They come into the world as whole beings, and your only job is to guide them through their developmental stages. That means they have unique passions and desires, which may not agree with what you have in mind for them. It also means they have a mind of their own, and even as toddlers, they, to a large extent, know what is good for them. This understanding is vital because it will keep you from being the kind of parent that trains their kids to become exactly like them. Your kids are not your clones. They are individual human beings and should be given the right to express themselves fully. The parents who aren't aware of this try to make their kids do things they would have done if they were younger, for example, career choices. Some parents insist their kids must choose a particular career path. It works sometimes, but most of the time, the kids end up being frustrated because they are torn between following their passion and doing what their parents expect of them. It's important to draw the line between your own desires, your child's passion, and your parenting duties. Try not to cross the line. If you truly want your kids to grow into successful adults, then you will have to let them explore the world for themselves. Of course, it's your duty to guide them where necessary, but the whole point is that you mustn't impose. You can do that by cultivating trust, respect, independence, collaboration, and kindness trick in them right from day one. Trick was developed by Esther Wojcicki, the mother of three highly successful women and a fulfilled teacher who has inspired thousands of her students to succeed. You cultivate each of these elements in varying degrees depending on the age of your child, but more importantly, you have to be trick personified because your kids, no matter their age, are constantly learning from your words and attitude. The sweet part is that all of these elements are intertwined, which you will learn in subsequent chapters. Chapter 3. Trust is the foundation for a stable adult life. We live in times that make it extremely difficult to trust people. Just open your web browser, scroll to your favorite news site for only a minute, and you will see more than enough reasons not to trust people. The news of rape, abuse, and all sorts of vices make it hard for us to trust our neighbors, partners, teachers in school, and even ourselves. How do we raise kids under these circumstances? It's indeed a tall order. Deep down, we all know trust is fundamental to growth, development, and peaceful living. But how do we do it? How can we give our kids enough world exposure, teach them to trust their abilities, and have hope in humanity, while at the same time warning them to stir off danger? This is a question every parent must answer if they want to be successful. First of all, let's set some things straight. The world is not as dangerous as the media makes it out to be. 
Don't forget that the media makes money primarily by massaging your emotions, and the most profitable emotion to take advantage of is fear. The old saying is true, don't believe everything you see in the media. Studies show that we're living in the most peaceful times in human history. Of course, bad things are still happening, but not to the degree that we have had to endure in past times. So with this in mind, how do you build trust in your child? Trust from a caregiver increases a child's confidence in their ability. Follow this golden rule. Make your child want you, but not need you. Parents think their kids need them, so they make it a point always to be there to meet their children's needs. The result is that kids become overly dependent on their parents, which is not good because it will affect their performance in school and as adults. Make the above rule your guiding principle when relating to your child and start it from day one. For instance, you don't always have to come to their aid when they are crying. Trust them sometimes to put themselves to bed. And when they get older, you mustn't constantly police their online activities. Give them some space and trust. Chapter 4. Trust works both ways in parenting. You want a situation where you don't only trust your kids, but they trust you too. This will balance their development and serve as a secure foundation from which they launch to the larger world. Most parents struggle with their teenagers. It seems like once kids get into middle and high school, they become independent of their parents in a negative way, so much so they cease to confide in or take advice from them. This is a common issue, but underlying it all is the matter of trust. Teenagers stop talking when they no longer see their parents as close confidants. It's a helpless situation for parents when their children stop talking to them because every parent wants to help their children in all the ways they possibly can. So how do you become a different parent? And how do you make your children so comfortable with you they can tell you anything? You have to start when they are little kids. Show them that you truly love them. In this case, that means being a good listener. Even when they are yet to start speaking, your kids are seeking to communicate with you. It's how they relate. And as the years go by and they start interacting with people outside the family, the desire to communicate becomes deeper. Don't cut them off because you're busy. Always find time to listen to them express themselves. For busy parents, a good practice can be creating time for everyone to talk about how they spent their day, the things that happened, and what they liked or disliked about their experience. This can create a deep connection between all members of your family. It won't only benefit the kids, everyone in the house will feel special, appreciated, and loved. We all have the ability to earn security through conscious self-reflection, which we can then pass on to our children. Esther Wojcicki Did you know? A 2015 report by Power to Decide says that two-thirds of families started by young unmarried mothers are poor. Additionally, more than half of mothers on welfare started family life in their teenage years. Chapter 5. For Kids, Independence Equals Grit and Competence Successful people come from all walks of life, but they all have a few things in common, and these things have come to be known as the principles for success. We've read them in books, seen them on TV, and heard them in podcasts. Those of us that applied the principles have our lives as proof that they work. One of those vital principles is grit. No one gets ahead in life without it. Grit means sticking with something no matter how hard it is or how much adversity you must face to achieve it. People often develop this attitude without even knowing it, especially those who have had to endure hardships before finding comfort. The link between hardship of any kind and comfort is grit. There's no single person who created a successful life for themselves that didn't have to develop grit. But how do you create this mental attitude in your kids, especially if they were born into a comfortable life? Here's how. Allow them to experience the inevitable challenges that come with being human. Overprotective parents make it a point to take away as much difficulty from their children's lives as possible. These parents would buy grades for their kids and protect them from being too exposed so they won't get hurt. But helicopter parenting doesn't help children for long. It makes them weak adults. You need to understand that it's okay for your children to experience failure, heartbreak, or any other unwanted experience that's part of being human. Don't fret because it's by going through those things that they are molded into capable people. Chapter 6. It's okay if your child fails to catch up early. Because of the love we have for our children, we desire only the best for them. When things don't seem to go as expected, we begin to worry. We worry when our children don't walk or speak early like other children. We're concerned about their academic performances. We constantly worry if they will grow up successful or not. All of these and many more worries are normal and completely legitimate. Only adults who have never tasted parenting before would argue that they are not. But while that is true, parents also need to understand the place of patience. Every child is different, so you shouldn't expect them to be like their peers. 
Rather than complain about their timing in speaking, walking, or anything, the best you can do for your children is be there for them and guide them in every way you can. Some of your children will find their place early in life, requiring little to no career guidance from you, but others won't. It's common for young adults to try out multiple things before finding the ones they resonate with. Don't panic. The most important thing is that your young adult is doing something productive because productivity is what you should actively encourage. Don't let your young adults waste their time playing video games or just lazing around. Conclusion. Kids don't come into the world knowing exactly how they should relate to everything around them. That's why they need you in those early years of their lives. The first 10 years of a child's life is your real opportunity to not only develop a deep parent-child connection, but to teach moral values that they will hold on to forever. Your child learns from you primarily through your words and actions. They are observing even when you think they are not. For this reason, try not to say one thing and do the exact opposite. Your words and actions must be coherent. If not, you'll leave the child confused. For example, a child wouldn't know what to do if his parents are teaching him to live in peace with other kids while fighting with each other every week. To ensure your child learns what you're teaching them quickly, try not to show them contrary behaviors. If you want your child to be kind to others, the best way to demonstrate it is by showing practical kindness to the people around you. Similarly, it's not just enough to teach financial prudence. You have to demonstrate it in the way you run the house. It even makes sense to involve them in some of your budgeting activities. This drives the lesson home for them, making it something they will never forget. Apply the same principle to anything you want to teach your children. Parenting is how culture gets transmitted to the next generation. It's your chance to pass on your core principles and values and to use all of your wisdom and insight in order to improve someone else's life. It's also your chance to affect eternity. Esther Wojcicki Try this. Increase collaboration in your family by asking for your children's opinions when making family decisions. This increases their confidence and sense of value.